Hey guys, so I just released a NPM package called GraphQL Chain. And what this is, is a middleware for GraphQL that was kind of inspired by how Express's middleware works. Now I'm gonna kind of explain why I made this and then how it works. So first off, why did I make a GraphQL middleware library or package? And the reason for that was A, I'm kind of just experimenting with it. I'm not sure if this is any good or not. Um, my initial testing is I kind of like it. Um, and I felt like uh, stuff was missing in like what other GraphQL middleware was doing. So there's two main things that I want my GraphQL middleware to do. The first is to be able to change the arguments. So for example, I might wanna change the um, resolver is context or the arguments um, and then so here's an example of that so for example I might want to add the user to the context um, so that the resolver has that um, and it can use it so I want to be able to basically change context the arguments anything I wanted to change to be able to do that and then secondly is to return early and what do I mean by that so I want the middleware to have the power to be able to not even call the resolver and be able to return early if it needs to. So like for example, this is um, helpful when caching. So for example, I could check uh, res, get something in the cache and then just return that and that's my middleware. But my middleware, it can decide whether I need to go to the cache or not. So it checks whether I have something in the cache, if it does, it goes ahead and returns it. Otherwise, if it's not in the cache, it grabs um, the result from the resolver, it saves it in the cache, and then returns it. Um, so that I wanted to have those two abilities. Uh, and I'm gonna go more in depth about how this works in a second. So that's why I, I uh, basically created another package, and I kinda want it to work how Express's middleware works, and I'll discuss uh, kind of why, how it's similar to that in a second. Uh, I wanted to just mention that there's another great library called GraphQL Middleware that basically solves the exact same problems that uh, I'm hoping to solve as well. It has both being able to change the context and then also being able to return early if you want to. So I really like those two things. So my library is just basically a different syntax than this. And I haven't decided which one I like better, whether I like GraphQL middleware or mine better yet. I'm kind of experimenting with them. And if you want to, I recommend, I, it is on NPM, you can download the package. And you can download this package if you want to um, and try them out and see which one you like. Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna just get into kind of how it works. So I said it was similar to um, Express. So here's what a middleware resolver looks like. A middleware resolver is just a, a function that's gonna get called before your resolver. And so this function has five arguments. Um, next, um, which is, that's where it's similar to Express. So next is the resolver or the next middleware that's gonna be called. Um, and then there's parent args context info. So these are the normal things that you would get when you were, have a resolver. So you have access to all these things. So here's an example of a basic validation middleware where I check the arguments, um, the name argument, and then I check the length of it. And if it's greater than 10, I throw an error. Otherwise, I'm gonna return next. So return next, what that does is next just calls the next thing uh, in the middleware. So whether that's another middleware or whether that's the resolver itself and it returns the value of that. Um, so that's how it works. So you can either return whatever you want here or you can return the value of the next middleware. Um, and so here's a few examples of that. So I mentioned caching earlier. So basically how the caching works is uh, right here I can look at Redis and I could be like, all right, let's see if there's any data in Redis. So for example, I'm hard coding the the key for the cache here. You might wanna do this differently um, in like a production setting, but this gives you an idea of how it might work. So I'm grabbing data from Redis and I'm checking if it's in the cache. So if it's in the cache, I go ahead and just return that data. Um, and I say, uh, we there's a cache hit and that's just me logging. Um, otherwise, we did not hit the cache. So I await the next result. So this is gonna be the value of uh, calling the next middleware and the next resolver, whatnot, all that jazz. So this is gonna be like what we 
are supposed to return. Um, and I just save that in the cache um, for the next time this is called, and then we return the result. So if the resolver is called twice, um, the first time it would not be in Redis. Um, we grab whatever we're supposed to return, um, we save it in Redis, and then we return it, and then next time it just hits the cache. Um, and then here I showed a little example of how you might do a context, um, um, adding something to the context. So here I'm checking whether the person's auth token is good, and if it is, I'm grabbing the user from it uh, and storing that in the user, and then I just say next off of that. And then you can use this later down the line, and you can also use it with different middleware. So it, here's an example of me using an authorization middleware after that. Um, and it just checks whether there's a user and whether he's an admin or not. And it throws an error if he doesn't meet any of those criteria. Otherwise, it just goes to the next thing. Um, and so the function that I, so, so this is all the code that you write, right? Um, the only thing I'm giving you is, so there's this type called middleware resolver, which I, I'm giving you that you can use from the library as well. Um, but the main function that the library has is this thing called chain. So it takes your middleware, so it chains them together, um, and it creates a basically a single middleware called hello middleware or whatever you want to call it, and then you just wrap your resolver. So now what's going to happen is uh, when I call the hello query, it's going to first run the get user middleware. Um, it's then going to run the authorization middleware, and then it's going to validate, um, and then it's going to call this resolver here um, in that order. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically how the library works. You create um, any type of middleware you want um, that follows this pattern where you have those arguments and then you call next at the end or return whatever you want. Um, you use the chain function to mash them all together um, into a single one and then you just wrap your resolver like that. Um, and I also have some more examples if you want to look in the examples directory and I kind of just have a full examples for logging, combining everything together, caching, authentication, and whatnot. Um, and then I think just the last thing, I wrote this with TypeScript. So here's, um, I just have a single, it's actually not too complex of a library. I have one function called chain that I, I wrote in TypeScript if you want to check this out. Um, I'm not going to go over the code right now. It could be like, it's, a, it's like a little bit weird because there's a lot of functions that return functions in here. Um, but it's a lot less code than, it's a very, it's six, 700 bytes. Um, so it's a small library. But yeah, so that's how that works. Um, if you wanna check it out, you can. And if you do, let me know what you guys think or if you have any suggestions on how it would work or if you have any questions on how I can improve the readme or whatnot, uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, I might be using this or I'll be using this, one of these two. Um, when I do the series that's coming up very, very soon. Um, I'll probably be starting that tomorrow. So one of those two I'll be using. Haven't decided which one I like better yet. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys like better as well.